Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're doing a beer review on Glutenberg beer. Gluten-free beer. If you've watched me do brews, um, I'm always using Clarity Firm and I'm starting to swear by this stuff. It makes the beer super clear. It supposedly pulls out a lot of the proteins that create the haze. And it supposedly makes it gluten-free, technically less than 20 parts per million according to them. I have not done any scientific testing after the fact, but I know I have a lot of stomach issues and I know a lot of us do and many of us do as we uh, age because time is not nice. So I'm thinking, hey, if it's helping me, great. If it's not, you know, it still looks really pretty. Don't forget, go ahead, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate the sharing. I don't do a lot of beer reviews with the exception of beers from around the world, of course. I know you're all going, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I know. And I did four stouts from, you know, up in Asheville. But I was just kind of impressed and I keep reading these things, but I haven't actually tried them. And this might be a total bomb. I might drink them and go, yeah, no, thank you. Now I have had other beers that actually had regular types of grains that were gluten-free that tasted amazing. So I'm kind of hoping for the best here. And the key here is it's two guys, Montreal, Canada, one of them has major issues with gluten and they decided, you know what, let's start brewing this commercially and let's make every, all of our beers 100% gluten-free. And they have a long list of beers. But I picked this up at my, yeah, local health food shop. Um, they sell a lot of beer. But um, it's Glutenberg and it's the Discovery Pack, which basically includes a blonde, a white, which is a wit, or they're taking a wit, pale ale, and a red ale. And, you know, it might be a bust, it might be amazing. I tore the thing open because I was just going to try them out and enjoy them. And I'm like, you know what? I wonder how many other people walk by these every day, like I have for years, and went, nah, I don't know what's up with that. I don't think I want to take a chance. Nah, yeah, I'll pass. And they go on to buy another beer. So when, had they tried them, they might go, wow, this is really freaking good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try the blonde and we'll work our way through. I'm not going to do them all right now, but it'll seem like right now, one back to back to back. But we're going to go ahead and go for the blonde. The blonde ale is 4.5% ABV. It's 15 IBU, blonde to clear supposedly. And it's made with water, millet, corn, sugar, hops, and yeast. I didn't see what the hops were, but didn't say that I could find. Smells nice. Smells a little like a lager. It's 4.5%. Very pretty, very light. Very, very light. My Sierra Nevada class. I did say I've been up in Asheville. And yeah, it's been a while, but it's one of the few glasses that has not been destroyed or broken. Okay. I know it's gonna sound weird. It smells kind of like Pilsner. I can maybe smell the corn. And I smell a lot of pear. A little flower, floral maybe, but a lot of pears. A little spice. I can't stop. I taste it and I smell pears. It's got a nice acidity to it. It's got a nice bite. It's hard to place it. It's, as, you, as it hits your tongue, it seems a little lighter than normal, but then you get all the spice and everything kind of going on and the flavors and the aroma kicking up. And of course the bubbles up under your nose. It has a kind of a pepper, like a white pepper bite. That's it. It's almost like a white or maybe a green tea. And definitely, definitely got some lemon, maybe a hint of citrus, but the pear, I smell so much pear. And I love pears. Maybe I'm a little partial to pears. 
The spice kind of lingers on the tongue though, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to say it drinks like a normal beer. It's definitely different, but it's very creative and it tastes really good. It's just not quite a lager, not quite an ale to me, even though it is an ale. It is an ale. It's kind of like a cross between a, a lager and an ale with... I know it's a blonde, but I mean, it's got a lot more wit going on. I mean, it's got a lot of spice going on and it's good. It's very good. I'm definitely going to sit back and drink the rest of this and enjoy it and go make dinner. Okay, we're on to the next one. Another Glutenberg White, which is their wit beer inspired. Not saying it's a wit beer, but it's probably pretty close. It's 5% ABV. IBU's 13, it's a hazy blonde. It is, ingredients is water, buckwheat, millet, amaranth, quinoa, cilantro. Yeah, I know, cilantro, I'm like, what? <laughs> Hops, orange peel, and yeast. So let's go ahead. I'm a little scared on the cilantro, but I'm just saying. I didn't see coriander, but I can kind of smell, you know, the malts and a, I guess I could smell a little bit of coriander, like some spicy greens. Which is funny because I didn't see coriander anywhere in the ingredients. Maybe I missed it. Let's see here. Did I miss it? It's not written all on here, but they do show, they show the calories, the carbs, the protein, everything. Got zero protein, 10 sodium, 24 carbs, zero fat, of course, 250 calories for a 473 milliliter, which I'm not sure if they follow the American 16 ounce or what they do as far as ounces. I have to look that up, but ooh, we got a tiny little gnat going around. Okay, so we got our Whitbeer look. It's that hazy blonde, very hazy blonde. Kind of yeasty. Which is good. Kind of expect it. Okay. I want to smell cilantro, but I smell coriander, but I didn't see coriander in the ingredients. I definitely smell the orange peel. Okay. I'm going to tell you straight off, right off the bat, the blonde that I had technically yesterday, but just before this, was good, but very interesting. This, I don't think if I gave it to you, you would know it used alternative grains. No, this would be fun to give to somebody and ask them what kind of grains are in there, because they would get it dead wrong. <laughs> Unless you told them it was gluten-free, of course, but yeah. This tastes like a wit beer to me. I mean, they can call it wit beer inspired because it doesn't follow the exact specifications, but uh, this is good. I like this a lot. It'll be a good summer. It is summer, at least here in the US. I know some of the viewers in Australia, it's winter. It's kind of hard for my brain to wrap around that, but I get it, but yeah. That's a great beer. You can get a little hints of floral, but definitely get that spice green, and I swear I taste coriander. I'll definitely get a little bit of orange peel, a little dryness on the back of the mouth. I got that dryness from the other one a little more so, and maybe that was the millet. But yeah, that's a great beer. On to the next one. Ta-da! Yeah, things keep changing. Got the Glutenberg Red Ale, which I've been looking forward to trying. Looking forward to it. It's supposed to be a dark amber. It is water, buckwheat, millet, molasses, chestnuts, candy syrup, quinoa, hops, and yeast. And no, I still don't know what kind of hops. 5% ABV and a 24 IBU, so a little more bitter. 240 calories. I love this on the back. I wish they would show any kind of nutrients because I'm thinking if there's a hefeweizen, it's probably big into B vitamins. But um, all they show is the sodium with 10 milligrams, carbs at 21, and 
That's pretty much it. And 473 milliliters. So here we go. Eh, light brown, amber, nice amber. I'd go with a I'd go with a medium amber. I don't know if I'd call that dark amber. I've seen some pretty dark ones, and that's not really that dark. It's just a nice amber. I mean, it's kind of pretty. Can't tell if that's from the chill on the glass or the haze. I think it's got a little bit of haze. Not much going on. Hang on, here we go. Yeah, it's definitely got some haze to it. It's not a super clear, but flavor is king. Okay, I get the caramel right away. I mean, right away. And bread, toasted bread, kind of like a, a biscuit malt, I guess, even though it's a, a biscuit malt, it's, I don't know, some buckwheat. Okay. I like it. I like the last one the best so far. It was really good and definitely not gonna tell it's not beer. I don't think you could tell this isn't beer. Well, I take it back, it's beer. You can't tell that this isn't made with regular malts. It's got something going on that you're like, what is that? I'm definitely getting, I'm gonna say a little bit of a roasted nut taste maybe. And that's probably the chestnuts. Definitely toasted bread or a nice browned bread um, in a good way. I could possibly see maybe a hint of coffee, but definitely lots of caramel. Lots of nice caramel and very drinkable, very smooth. Yeah, I'm thinking if I served you this, it's a little different than some, but you wouldn't know it wasn't made with, you know, regular hop or regular barley, things like that. You get your buckwheat, your millet. Millet is great if you have birds, they love it. Molasses, which is probably where I'm getting all that, that darker taste is from the molasses and the chestnuts, especially if they roasted the chestnuts first. Um, candy syrup. I don't know what color candy, if they don't light, medium, they probably did it for a little more of the color. And of course, you know, they've been adding sugar to some of them to get the ABV. So the candy syrup would replace that. Quinoa, I'm kind of shocked there's no protein on these things because I know quinoa supposedly has protein. And then hops and yeast. So very nice, very drinkable. I'm gonna say I still like, which one was it? The white, the wit. The wit was amazing and I like reds a lot. This is very good, don't get me wrong, but so far the wit, is my favorite. Gonna have to try the pale ale, see where we go. But on to the next beer. And yes, I'm doing something here. I'm gonna be moving some banana and some strawberry beers and eventually doing some blending and seeing how they come out. Yeah, things keep changing. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was doing some beer transfers and I'm on to the next one, but in between I'm doing uh, Glutenberg because I need a good beer to try. And it's gluten-free, but it tastes great. So I'm okay with that. This is the Glutenberg Pale Ale, which I've been dying to try. It's 5.5% ABV, 50 IBU. So we've jumped all the way from the lowest, which was the red at 15, all the way to 50. Yeah, it's water, of course, millet, buckwheat, corn, candy syrup, raw sugar or sugar, quinoa, hops, and yeast. And no, I don't know what kind of hops and what kind of yeast, you can ask but I've been dying to try this thing. My favorite so far, like I mentioned, was the wit, but I'm hoping to be won over. I like a good pale ale. I mean, IPAs are a great thing, but I love a good pale ale. It's drinkable, it's something you can have a couple, you know, or as people call them nowadays, sessionable IPAs. Pale ale. I don't know, some people's pale ales are a lot lighter than others. Okay, first of all, crystal clear. Flavor is king, so I really could care less, but it is cool to see it when it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that, but crystal clear. A little more hazy towards the top where it's a little thicker, but that's probably from my glass being cold. Yes, I like my glasses cold. Not frozen, but cold. Okay, I'm telling you right now, 
The hops smell great. I smell the hops. I got a little floral and I've got some fruit going on. Okay, I'm gonna take a shot here. I'm gonna say I have citrus, maybe grapefruit. And then some stone fruit, like maybe peach or apricot or something like that. It smells really nice. Really, really, really nice. Okay, the mouthfeel, a little on the light side, but very nice, very smooth. I'm getting a lot of citrus and I wanna say it's, hang on. It's kind of weird, not in a bad way. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I get apricot, I get pink, maybe pink or maybe grapefruit, with a little bit of orange, but I get a little bit of rind towards the end and it's mild, it's not like in your face. It's grapefruit rind, definitely grapefruit rind. I love grapefruits. I eat way too many grapefruits, but I love grapefruits. And it's definitely grapefruit rind, but I get like, I get apricot, I get a little bit of orange, Maybe some other fruits or berries going on in there. Maybe a hint of peach. And then I get the grapefruit rind as a finish. And it's probably to do with the bittering of the hops and at the same time, the citrus. So together, they're probably giving me that illusion that I'm kind of eating a grapefruit rind a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. If I had to do it by mouthfeel, taste, flavor, everything. The wit might be number one, but if I wanted to do it by just sheer flavor and a lot going on in a really good way as far as things that I like to taste, I love good apricot where it's not like, you've seen me do the apricot and it starts turning floral after a while, like really bad floral as it ages. Not the case here. I like this, I like this a lot. I could easily see myself ordering this if it was on tap without question. They said, hey, we got Glutenberg's Pale Ale. You know what? I'm like, let's start there. It's 5.5%. A little high on the sessionable since people try to be around the five. But that would be a great starter. Finish off with maybe a stronger IPA somewhere around the six and a half, seven percent Very pretty beer, if you didn't see the can. It's 270 calories. It's got more calories than any of the others. 15 grams of sodium, so it's got a little bit more sodium, about 50% more than the other two, but 15, come on, it's nothing. 23 grams of carbohydrates, and they don't list any other nutrients, but. I'm interested now in trying the other Glutenberg beers. The wit had me interested. The red was nice. I like the flavors going on, but after having this pale ale, yeah, now I want to try all of their beers that they make just to try them out. I think they have a stout in there. I'd love to try that too. And I think they have an IPA, but this pale ale is amazing. If you ever go to grab a Glutenberg and you don't want to do the discovery pack, if you pick the pale ale, I don't think you'll be upset. I think you'll be very happy, pleasantly surprised per se. And it's gluten-free. So if you got any friends that have gluten issues, like I said, I think I may, I don't know, but you know, whatever, I have lots of issues. Thanks again, cheers, and thanks for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate the sharing. Thank you again, cheers.